even gets a ban here as well. I guess we'll find out soon because we are Inter Champions Select for our second game here. TSM surprisingly down one to start it off as Malzahar Renekton are their first two bans. And there's a LeBlanc ban from Team Envy. You'll probably see a Varus in there as well. And then maybe they get some wiggle room on the final ban. I really just feel like for TSM, it's about mentally refocusing, resetting, forgetting about the first game and, and going into the second one. Uh, you know, with clear minds. Because even if you're playing back the same game with the same drafts, people are going to favor TSM 9 out of 10 times. Yep. Well, it looks like uh, TSM do have one more ban to get through. The expected Varus did come out for Envy. And there's a Shen ban. So, again, a top laner that dropped through because of how badly Envy wanted to play Rumble. We'll see if maybe he, Shen shows himself instead. It says Rengar is the final one from Envy. So, uh, Envy were very quick to lock in their first pick in game number one. TSM taking a little bit more time, and there's quite a bit to think about here. I mean, Graves jumps out. It's the obvious choice, but lots of first pickable champions available. Yeah, Graves is, is certainly very high priority, but I mean, we just saw Rumble get first pick last time. Camille is open, so Haunts are going to go right back to that. Uh, the early game started very well, and he's had some really good games on Camille. Um, but that said, I mean, TSM are showing some confidence. They're not actually banning out what they just lost to. And Envy has the ability to opt into the, these similar matchups once again. They could go Rumble Jace right here. And, and kind of just start it off. Might be time to run it back. I mean, I think Rumble Jace is insanely strong. Instead, they'll take Rumble Lee Sin. Okay. So a bit of a difference here. Huge priority on getting Lyra a comfort champion, but given how well he performed in game one, I can't really blame the team. Well, I agree, but at the same time, it's kind of funny to see Lee Sin pick this early uh, over something like Graves and, and, and so on and so forth. Graves the least. I don't really see Sven's Garen picking it away from Lyra, so I do think that they could have left it to at least the last pick in the first round and grabbed up something else that may have been more contested. Uh, but that said, TSM isn't necessarily going to be even going for the same picks. No, they got Rise actually, so a pretty big change already as Bjergsen going to blind pick his mid laner. TSM, see what they do with this next pick. I think Karma's really good, so I'll take Karma away. Biofrost had a decent looking game there. And should fit, just so solid, should right? fit almost any comp, yeah. Exactly. And, and that's the biggest thing is you can pick it blind. It's always good. There's no like, oh, God, it's Karma into X. It's good in every matchup. It's always useful. So it's such a, a, such a high baseline performance. Yeah, Karma just one of those solid champions as Envy. I'm kind of curious to see if they take the JC because I don't think they're getting it if they don't take it away here. Instead, they're actually going to get Ezreal hmm. for Apollo. So banning that one away, I guess, given the way they drafted, it's unlikely that we can get Ziggs and Jace. So thinking they're going to try something else. And they can target Turtle fairly yes. heavily in the draft. Which now, they're doing now. Exactly, because they had already banned out the Varus. So you can take away the Sivir. You can take away either, if you're more worried about the Ash or the, or the Jin, you can take away that. So Jin is still available with 380 carry bans. I don't feel like Turtle is really uh, sweating here. But if there was 180 carry to play into uh, Rumble and Lee Sin out of the meta ones. It, it's pretty scary to play Jin, I think. Certainly think so. Let's see what TSM's last ban is, though. They banned Lulu again. So taking that away from Hakuho. Another thing they could even do, if Turtle is concerned about the the options that Rumble and, and Lee Sin have as far as diving you and taking you out, he could even go Caitlyn, right? It is a safer pick. Well, Jace is the final ban for TSM, which I think is... Uh, pretty necessary, <laughs> given Ninja's strong performance on it. And also, again, pairs well with kind of what Envy wants to do, but also the picks they've already made. So Envy, though, going to mix it up. Nami for Hako, so very different from the aggressive supports he usually likes to play. I think Nami Ezreal is a fantastic bot lane, though. Uh, really does work so well uh, into these lanes. You can poke people out so heavily. It kind of emphasizes the strengths of Ezreal, because both of them poke very well. Uh, and TSM could do this. I mean, Turtle is not played a lot of, of Ziggs. No one really has in the LCS this season, even when it was super hype at first. So he may just run it right back at them. Scar was just talking on the desk about how Ziggs is so good into Ezreal. So now Turtle's going to get his chance to play the other side of the matchup. Yep, Ziggs there and Graves over for TSM to finish out their draft. And kind of unlike Envy, who opted for a better skirmishing, maybe team fight pick, they, they wanted, they kind of wanted a tank for their bottom lane. Uh, there isn't like a melee support that's going to run into a bunch of problems here as Orianna is the final pick there for Envy. Ninja going to take that one versus Bjergsen's Rise. And it's another thing to point out is this is Karma with the Ziggs, not a yes. bomb, right? So this is an even better lane. Uh, so if it is an AD carry matchup advantage, then you're looking at an even better support to be paired with that. While it would give Nami the edge over, over Karma for that sort of laning, uh, Ziggs obviously very, very strong. And, and the fact that TSM can draft Graves as their fifth pick is, is pretty nice for them too, because that is considered 
uh, like a first pick worthy jungler. Yeah, I think so as well. Instead, maybe reading Envy's tendencies a bit in the draft, but it works out for them. They come out of this draft with a hugely powerful comp. It's kind of a similar look in places mm -hmm. for TSM. I think, again, Honza, Fenskar, and Bjergsen are going to be where we look to, but Total and Biofrost could certainly make pressure, and if TSM find a lead, we know that Ziggs is capable of continuing to siege and snowballing things. I think Envy on the other side, they've slowed things down a decent amount, have a bit more team fight built into this comp. Not as much early game, but look, if Lyric can work his magic again, Envy should have a pretty good platform to once again snowball a game and come out with a 2-0 here versus yeah. TSM. I mean, you would think so. I think both the drafts are, are pretty standard. I don't like Envy's draft as much this time as last time. I, I think that picking the lease in early is, is kind of giving up too much for too little of a gain. When you're giving away Graves as the last pick, do you really need to pick the lease in this early? Can you not have gotten something that would have maybe been even more powerful, like the Jace in the mid lane? Not that Orianna is any slouch, but I, I feel like they had such success with their composition last time, uh, they could have maybe set themselves up a little bit better in the draft this time around. Well, we'll see what adjustments these two teams make, because we are going to get ourselves onto Summoner's Rift for game number two, TSM down one as Envy came out swinging in the first game. See if TSM maybe play a little bit more of that measured style, or if maybe they're a bit mad, they play even more aggressive <laughs> and try and take out Envy, they which I don't could. recommend. No, I mean, I, I think that if anything, they should be playing the more measured style, kind of pull them back into a slower paced game that you're gonna be super comfortable in. When you're brawling against Envy, that is where they're pretty much most comfortable. And that is generally how a 10th team beating a, a, a first or second place team looks is a game like that where it's very bloody, lots of fights, and they can just win through mechanics. Yeah, like you said, just got was so far ahead in the last game that even though they made some mistakes in the late game team fight, mm. it didn't matter too much. Looks like Total though is guarding the Raptor pit, but and we should be able to get a ward in there if they uh, have their heart set on it. Going to group everybody up and really committing for this vision. TSM already had their early walk up, managing to get the vision down. Envy got a defensive ward, but it looks like they won't be able to get that pretty standard, but also pretty crucial early game ward down. And that's both times actually, uh, that this is this is the way that it played out. That blue side gets a ward on their enemy Raptors and red side cannot actually respond to that. Uh, so pretty interesting to see it play out that way. Uh, and Sven's Garen looks like he actually just wants to try to take away uh, the enemy red buff. Did see the war that Envy put down, so they're able to walk around it very easily. Hansa can offer some help here as well. Making sure he can leash this for Svenskaren, so already a big change for TSM. Svenskaren, right where he likes to start off in the enemy jungle. Yeah, Lyra should be warned about this simply because of the way that Hansa is entering lane. Uh, Lyra should know now that they were starting on his side of the jungle uh, and be able to go straight to his enemy's red buff if he wants to respond that way. Uh, there's obviously, you still can try to go into a more standard jungle path, but you really do have to take at least something away uh, from the enemy or you'll fall pretty far behind. Spence Garen actually taking down the Raptor camp as well, so trying to take quite a lot out of this early stage of the jungle. Jerks and Ninja. In the meantime, fighting it out in mid lane here. Ninja did get the Thunderlords off, so a bit of poke damage down. And Spence Garant, yeah, blatantly reveals where I was. Just walked straight through mid lane. Yeah, I'm pretty surprised actually that Lyra did Wolves instead of going straight across. Because now what is he going to do? I mean, he can go try to steal away top side of TSM's jungle, but even that is pretty far away. Uh, so Sven has not completed a three buff, but he is going to secure both of the red buffs. And and now Lyra, the best he can hope for is really getting both the blues. Yep, certainly ahead as well as far as the early leveling goes. Oh, this is the kind of a nice gank. Bjergsen very far forward. Ninja going to try and get the damage down. Bjergsen flashes out. Snare onto Lyra is nice. And Bjergsen commits everything, but he gets out. Both summoners forced there, so still good job by Lyra. Uh, he certainly still needs to try to get some more camps, get some experience here. Uh, as Seraph is in a lot of trouble here. That was Seraph so dead. nice from Haunt. So looking for a solo kill now. Seraph overheating. Oh, flash. good flash. Looking for the outplay, but the minion's going to take him down. Oh, that was so close for Seraph. The flash was very nice from him, but the minion damage coming in gets Haunt to that first blood. And, and Lyra is going to get three buff now. And going to be set pretty far behind as as Senskaren is going to have almost all his camps to walk around and pick up. And there's really nothing there for Lyra. Just the crux is that Lyra is now starting. So he's going to be awfully far behind. Yeah. Haunter and Seraph both TP back in. Again, another nice stun from Haunter. Trying to make sure that Seraph's always turned around as well. It's just one again. And this one is a very close fight. So Seraph was level three as he started to go forward. And that is why he kind of opted into this fight. As he does overheat, this is a really nice flash. So close, but he needs to back off a little bit faster there. 
Uh, couldn't quite do it as, as the Cannon Minion finishes him out, and that was a very close duel. And we know how snowball these damage versus damage matchups can be, so that's massive for well, Monster. TSM fans have rallied after game <laughs> one. 87%. Not for TSM, but I'm sure Envy has picked up a number of fans, at least for their first game performance. Lyra are going to kick down the Scuttle Crab. He's going down. I mean, he's getting a little bit here, but Sven, now he's the one with the XP advantage in the jungle matchup. Although it looks like top lane's at it again. Yeah, both top laners have no flash, so jungle attention is up here. Lyra looking for the Q. Ooh, dive is aggressive since Garen also walking over, so don't want to overcommit here. Hansa walks the way back. Just going to play this one safe. He's got a couple charges left in that potion. Yeah. So it shouldn't be too bad as far as health goes. And unless Haunter really stepped forward and committed to a fight, that was never going to be a dive. It was essentially just resetting the wave, allowing it to crash uh, so that Seraph is not stuck sitting up by the enemy turret. See Bjergsen laying into Ninja, trying to get the Qs out in rapid fire succession. Doesn't find it, but he's got the lane pushed up and looks like he's going to just kind of walk back over as Svenskaren. Busy taking down more Raptors from Envy. Should walk past his control ward as well. Seraph actually wandered down the river to... Oh, no. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Dude's managed to catch it there. So Seraph's early ward going to get taken down. Certainly will be. And for Lyra, you're kind of hoping that Ninja can get a pretty nice little edge from the summoners being down on Bjergsen. Because that's really all he's been able to, to accomplish so far in the early game. Where Svenskaren has kind of gotten a little bit more XP from the camps that he's taken away from his opponent. Lyra is going to be forced to kind of try to invade and get something back. Lyra is actually fighting Hakua. He's trying and to freeze the it out. Yeah, freezing this one out. Turtle's going to walk back in, so he's not going to miss a minion. See if Turtle AoE's down the wave. No, going to be patient, so time to nice some of these from Apollo. He's now going to take his time to go back. He's 10 CS ahead, but Turtle will play catch up very quickly with this wave that Biofrost lovingly left for him. <laughs> if, he, if he gets any of this, yes, he will. Look. <laughs> oh, there he goes. He got one. It's all going to be fine. It's tough, man. Six doesn't really have any base AT. It's going to be OK, though. Turtle keeping the wave in a good spot. He's got that early lost chapter as well. So kind of weird to see mid lane items in the bottom lane, but welcome to Ziggs. Mm -hmm. That's the early power coming out. Yeah, the lost chapter is really strong. We had uh, been seeing a lot of people go tier and Morelos as well, just for the extra mana so you're never running out, especially when paired with a, a, a mana using mid laner because you're generally not going to get the blue buff. Uh, that's one of the things I think was pretty cool about what Envy did last game. So you have Ninja going a tier build, so he doesn't need that mana as much and he can give the blue buff over to a more aggressive built Ziggs. Well, you can see Bjergsen again just kind of getting himself pushed in, but he has these early mana items as well. Tier is done and Catalyst should be on the way shortly. And summoners are pretty much back up. Yep. So safe there after Lyra's initial aggression on Svenskaren. It's a lot of damage, actually. Thunderlords plus the dissonance does manage to chunk out Sven. Sven's kind of calmed things down a bit. Lyra's managed to farm his way back in, make sure he keeps the experience even. In fact, he's now up on levels over Svenskaren. Lyra with Red Ruff on an ultimate could also look for a play here. With Seraph coming down, might be a mid lane gank. Yeah, I mean, Bjergsen does have his flash back, but there's three members here. Shockwave hits. Great shockwave there, equalizer down as well. Bjergsen realm walks out immediately, tries to lock it down, gets himself safe under the turret. Very well played. Oh, that was so smart from Bjergsen. He uses a rune prison on Lyra because he was the only one left with CC to interrupt that alt, and then is barely able to get out, only blowing the ghost. Really nicely played. Calm stuff. Spence Garrett now level six, gonna cover the wave for a little while. But Bjergsen's still here. Might try and get a bit of extra CS and hit a gold break point. Turtle and Biofrost, though, in the meantime, getting things pushing into the bottom side. Looks like the Nami Ezreal lane had maybe an earlier advantage, but now that Turtle's got some ranks in his queue and Biofrost able to commit his poke as well, should be able to shove this wave in pretty consistently towards Envy's turret. And Apollo not doing the best there. Has actually missed like, a ton of CS under turret. Both these guys are, are not really it's a struggle doing today. Their, their very best. Nami taking that CS now? All right, there we go. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. It's still Everyone's close. That's all that matters, take a, right? Take a deep breath. <laughs> Haunts up with the Shane now level 7. Mm -hmm. Actually has a nice CS lead versus Seraph, so you can kind of see how that early first blood is helping him. What is what you mentioned, a pretty volatile, snowball-y top lane matchup. Yeah, I mean, Seraph got a lot of help to get back into it after the brutal start to last game. Uh, this time they've been pretty isolated, and uh, while he's not massively behind, you certainly do not want to be at a stage where Hanser is completing a Triforce and you are kind of just on like pieces of items. You need to be pretty powerful to actually fight back at that point. Is that blue buff going to get started up? Ninja going to walk over and take that one for himself. Bjergsen likely doing the same in just a little bit when Sven's done getting out of Envy's left side of the jungle. 
feel like Spins had Rebuff for quite a while. He's actually looking for top lane here, so it could be dive time under Seraph. Hornsa able to set it up pretty easily with his ultimate. Yeah, it looks like that's exactly what they're going to go for. Seraph does have his equalizer up just right now, so it would be a super risky dive uh, with Seraph still sitting at full health. And this is at least something where he's moving up to try to anticipate where Lyra could be, right? They're covering uh, for your laner. Berkson at least getting some trade damage out with Ninja, but Ninja with the blue buff feeling pretty safe. Good little take out of the control world, though, as Sven Skarin does take down some parts of the Krug camp. It doesn't decide to commit to the whole thing. Gonna leave this guy's bloom there as well. In fact, now Hortz is running down the mid lane. Here's a Realm Wall play in the lane. Ninja forced to flash. Oh. Really nice from Bjergsen. I don't really think he needed to flash at all, actually. I mean, that was super respectful. Like, way too much respect, even. A, you have your Ghost, can you just Ghost and walk out? B, you have Shockwave. Simply put your ball on the Realm Warp and alt as he comes in and walk away. I mean, both those I think are great options, but either way, Bjergsen forces flash. Yep. I think attempt started, but not finished there. Instead, Bjergsen will collect a pretty value trade, getting that summoner down. Mm -hmm. Ninja and Lyra, though, on the roam. Ball gonna check that brush. Ward goes down. They are behind Bjergsen here, and he doesn't have Realm Warp, but both summoners are available. And Lyra's not even gonna try. A little low on mana. Blue buff still needs to do its job, but Ninja taking some poke. Lyra not gonna commit for it. Ninja instead just gonna fall back and take the CS down. Turtle back in trouble with minions under the turret. Ulti goes down, cancels a post recall. And Turtle gonna take the rest of the CS and go back himself. So even, actually dead even on CS between the bot laners right now. Apollo just getting uh, delayed ever so slightly. Not too big of a deal though, as, as Turtle wasn't staying to push or anything, but it's uh, still worthwhile, especially when you have a CDR. It's not that long of a cooldown. Alira is spotted out. Bjergsen's actually lying in wait. They're trying to bait him in. Oh, he's getting baited though. There's a Nami up here as well. Teleport and in. There's a rumble. Ninja gonna get caught by Biofrost, but Sven Skarin already caught out by Seraph. He's burning down. Shockwave finds one as Haunter does take out Ninja. They dive in to try and take him down, but Sven is already down. Lyra we're gonna get locked up and killed as Bjergsen able to take him down after Haunter's ultimate two for one trade in favor of TSM. Well played by TSM, and it's kind of that butterfly effect. Where's the flash from Ninja? He's already blown it earlier. If he had that available, he likely could have stayed alive there and perhaps turned around that play. Now Seraph getting locked down, but. No additional diving from TSM. Don't watch this one again. I mean, a nice start here from TSM to sort of bait Lyra in, but Envy tried to react here. Yeah, they do try to react, but, you know, Seraph doesn't have his equalizer, and he's he's not able to really commit to as much. Yes, they do get their one kill. If equalizer is available here, this is a fight that Envy can still win. Uh, but after that initial kill, great focus onto Lyra means there's only one damage threat remaining, and Seraph can't stay around. Turtle continuing to push the lane down. He's got his Morella Nomicon finish now, so that first early bit of power from Ziggs is now complete. Apollo still sitting with his mana Mune, so it needs a little while longer, but as the cold ticking down, only 30 ish minions to go. It's Haunter and Seraph again. Back and forth here, and Seraph is losing the trip pretty badly. Yeah. Has to commit the ultimate just to stay alive. Yeah, and that wasn't a great ultimate. I mean, the horizontal one there, you want to go for a vertical so that Haunter has to kind of retreat along that path as well, or at least stay uh, around a little bit longer. With that ultimate down, he's pretty vulnerable to being dove. They see the red buff being taken away, but nothing he can really do about it. And now Equalizer's down, so he just has to sacrifice the entire mini wave. He has to back off, and wow, he's actually going to go for a TP play instead on bot side. Now, almost all of Envy are here, actually. Turtle is all alone. Trying to get a trade kill onto Apollo before it all goes in. Kick from Lyra is nice. Gonna follow it up, and Turtle just dies. Nicely played, but who's gonna get first turret? Two members are topside. There's four down here for Envy, so that I would expect them to get it, but this turret is a lot lower, and that's a red buff Graves knocking away. It's gonna be close. First turret gold is quite important. Yep, yeah, looks like maybe Envy just gonna win the race. Oh. They didn't. It's actually Haunter that gets it first, I believe. No, no. Envy no? did. Red All team right. got the first turret there. So that was just about a split second apart. And the full commitment to it, I mean, that's a, a quick decision from Seraph. When he knows he cannot contest that wave, instant TP bot lane. They get a kill and they get first turret. Good job. Well, it feels bad for Turtle, but a great play from Envy to capitalize, get themselves some extra gold and keep the game. Keep the game even in gold. Ninja, Ooh, though, Ninja. in danger. Face checking, face checks, haunts a realm warp in as well. That's the shockwave to try and delay it, but Bjergsen realm warps in to steal the kill. And Ninja, I mean, he cannot play to that side of the map. Yes, it's your Ooh. jungle, but TSM Beautiful. has had so much control up there uh, that you can't really afford uh, to kind of just brazenly check in like oh, that. Oh, Lyra eating damage from Bjergsen as well. Rise. 
And that lockdown starts, he really just dishes it out. And Haunter has been diving towards people with reckless abandon. And TSM and their aggression going to pay off here. They get themselves a second turret after the extension of the play and take down the mid out of. And this is feeling like more of what you expect to see. Haunter and Bjergsen both quite a bit ahead now. And, and TSM is looking like they are having better vision control, moving around the map very well. Uh, they've pretty much made MB's right side jungle completely their own. If you look how many wards are up there, there's like six wards in that quadrant. They're doing a very good job. Yep, and Total now able to get pressure down onto the turret. Remember, Ziggs can execute turrets with the W, so it doesn't need too much more. And, you know, apart from the four-man dive that got him killed after Seraph's mm -hmm. TP, Total and Biofrost, again, stable as usual. I think Haunt has been the big recipient of a lot of power here. 2 0 2 in that Camille. We saw the trades were not going Seraph's way before. Now the Trinity Force has been completed, and Haunt should have a effortless duel. Yeah, he really will. Uh, as Seraph hasn't even completed his item yet, he doesn't even have his Zonia's done. Uh, that would give him some hope of fighting back, but uh, I really favor Haunter in pretty much all of the fights going forward in, in as far as 1v1 goes. He's getting top line pressure started as well, Seraph. Is trying to roam around and get stuff done in other parts of the map, which is nice to see, but I mean, he's got a lot of free time while the waves are getting pushed in, so now I'm going to join that wave and, and take it down. And that's exactly it, right? He can't do anything in the 1v1, so you may as well look around for opportunities. You sacrifice a couple CS, but the opportunity cost is pretty low because he doesn't want to be in a 1v1 with Hanser. No. Coverage has kind of dropped from that side of the map as well for TSM, so probably look for Sven to get back in and TSM to get that deep vision back down. Looks like bottom out of turret the only one really left for them to take, so maybe going to apply pressure there. There's also, an, also a Mountain Drake they can get out of the deal as well. So a lot of potential here for TSM on the right-hand side. And they can start this dragon up. It should be there is no problem as Lyra is topside, and he's even been pinged out, so Haunter is not really in any danger. Uh, this even means that the TSM bot lane can push up and try to force this turret here too. They're really going in a multiple locations at once. Yep, nice players here from TSM continuing to play the map well. Berkson going to fade towards the right-hand side. Ninja again busy with his creep wave as the Mountain Drake goes over to TSM, and Mountain Drake to the Siege team isn't bad, or at least one of the Siege champions in Ziggs. And again, TSM, give it a minute maybe, but should have that bottom out of turret and pretty substantial lead for themselves. Turret goes down and two and a half thousand gold up now. And this is a pretty risky take here from Lyra. Uh, can go for a bit of a smite fight, uh, but I mean, Bjergsen is coming down, Camille is coming down. I don't know if they want this. Oh, Scare committed, kicked in by Lyra. Seraph, he's going to slow him, but Haunter going to get the stun down onto both, I believe. Bjergsen leaps over the wall and does manage to take down one. Lyra will fall to Haunter, but Realm Watt for Bjergsen going to try and get him out safely. Haunter still wants to go in, but now Envy going to turn it around. The Shockwave doesn't find its target, though. Yeah, great dodge out there from Haunter. And, and Lyra, I mean, he wanted the fight. He wants to make something happen, but they're in such a weaker spot in the game that even with an extra member on that side of the map, Hakua was never there in time to actually have an impact. Haunter gets low, but now going to go back to base. Oh, actually going to push out one more wave. So I guess had a potion charge to play with. And Ninja's not having any of this. Yeah. He's like, if you're in the lane with that much health, something's going to go wrong. So he's going to show respect there to Haunter's power. Now with three kills to the Camille. And uh, just let Seraph catch the wave as it pushes back towards top lane. Mm -hmm. Seraph will be able to continue to collect that up. And Envy does have good late game scaling. You know, it's not like they're completely out of it. Orianna and Ezreal and Rumble are very powerful later stages of the game. Uh, not that they have, a, I would say, a scaling advantage, but they're not out of it. The gold lead is not massive, um, but it does feel like TSM is, is getting more and more in their favor as far as the pace of the game, yeah, the vision. I think that's a good thing to say. I mean, this is the kind of game that TSM have been playing all season long. Yeah. And I mean, Haunter is, is the one in this particular game that's really been unlocked. I and mean, Bjergsen also looking good at 2 0 2. And you're starting to see, just looking down at the items, I mean, we're going to hit some pretty strong two item spikes in a couple of minutes. And even the Rift Herald being taken here by TSM, we rarely see this getting taken. But TSM just feel they've got so much control that they can afford to take this, even with Envy potentially contesting. And I don't think they really will go for much of a contest. Apollo's on the bot side, five members from TSM here. I don't think that Envy can really do anything about it. And, and I think it's a smart time to take it. There's really not a lot else on the map. The Dragon's already down. They weren't in a position to siege tier twos. And hey, it's something you can grab for free. And it just makes Haunter even stronger now. He's the one that's been uh, given all these early game advantage. Ooh, Spence Aaron about the face check. Great scan, though. Spots everyone in the brush. <laughs> it's always scary because you just see silhouettes. But good reactions there from Spence Garen. Doesn't get himself caught. And Quantz is going to start really wailing on the Taurus. He's got the Tiamat now to complement the Trinity Force. And 
Haunts are left alone, will be able to take down either champions or turrets, whichever enemy decide to send their way. So they have to manage this pressure correctly. Yeah, Seraph running back up there to try to catch the wave, but he's uh, pretty late to the party, so a, a fair bit of damage can go down on this turret. And honestly, Haunter can probably just dive him at this point, which is why Hakuo is up there, but TSM sending multiple members up too. Yeah, I like this play here. Now Seraph gonna get locked in. Bifrost already there. Sven's carrying in as well. Ha Hakuo trying to heal him up, but Seraph stunned by the hookshot. Decent equalizer. Zonius is good. It should be taken down. Haunter now on a rampage. And yeah, Ninja's trying to get up here. Oh, oh nice shot shot wave. catches two. Bubble only gets Sven's scare though. Haunts are flashed out. But that's a good first kill there for MB. Can they get a little bit more? They're going to try and chase it down. Biofrost slowed in by the Orianna W, but that's all they have. And they need to respond to Bjergsen on the bot side. He actually just realm warped the minions onto the turret there. Uh, if you saw on the minimap, he jerked forward. That's what that was. And he's trying to get more pressure down. Should be a tier two turret going the way of TSM. So despite the kill, they get two turrets and trade one back. Really good play across the map there for TSM. Again, kind of playing more how we'd expect. Now 5,000 gold up. I mean, Ninja and Haunter are going to do a battle, but oh, Ninja's oh going to lose handily. <laughs> And Haunter is unstoppable. Yeah, not even close. Haunter just feels like he is in a prime position to take this game over completely. He even has so much gold in the bank. This is a guy running around with 2,500 gold in his pocket, just smashing people. And you'll watch how fast Ninja can go down. This is Haunter opting into a fight at about 20% HP because Ninja's low on mana, doesn't have the shockwave, and no chance for him to fight back. I think when uh, they picked Camille in game one, this was the sort of game that <laughs> TSM were envisioning for Haunter. So it's nice to see them trust in their top laner's mm -hmm. ability, run the pick back, and just have it get set up a little bit better. Sure, Seraph overcommitted to a, a, an all-in there at level three and got himself killed, but Haunter has played the game very well since there, and TSM just playing much more control, understanding where they're strong, and Haunter's really able to shine in this sort of game. Envy. Playing reactively is not their strong suit, but unfortunately for them, that's where they're forced into at this stage. It really is, and, and you know, you, you can't fault Haunter for Seraph's mistake in the all-in. A lot of League of Legends, even at the professional level, is simply capitalizing on your opponent's mistakes. And Haunter was able to do that very well, even feeling confident enough to go Ravenous Hydra as opposed to the Titanic. So this is even more of a split-pushy build. You have very good wave clear, you lifesteal back up, and he is going to be an extremely powerful duelist. He's already causing far too many problems for MB. It's TSM to wade their way through this right-hand side. Biofrost scanning through, getting the vision down. And five turrets to one currently. TSM just have that mid-tier two as kind of the next obvious point of attack. So Biofrost is setting the scene, getting those vision down. And look at Turtle in with a Lich Bane right on time. Yep, grabs the Lich Bane right up to the turret. That one is gone. And Satchel not even needed yeah. as... Triforce plus Lich Bane, you're going to crush those turrets. I think he just committed the ducky for <laughs> just a bit of fun. Style points. Sure. <laughs> Spout and Drake up in five seconds as well. And that's a nice thing. I mean, they're going to get a second mountain here unless MB find themselves a steal. But I think they're thinking about a trade instead. And uh, the seed damage from this Camille and Ziggs is going to be pretty overwhelming. Yep. The, the trade is a blue buff, right? Not much of a, a, a big deal there for TSM. They will lose that, but... It's, it's not like Bjergsen is even playing a super mana-hungry champion. I mean, he already has his, his Roa done, he has his Seraphs done, so not a big deal. No, would like it, but not a huge loss, like you said. Mm -hmm. And it looks like Haunter's actually going to be moving down towards the bottom side, and he will get that pressure going there. I thought Envy might look at a uh, desperate-looking Baron, but instead they just take the little thing. Again, playing a little more control for Envy is nice to see. They understand they are behind and, and can't afford to make too many reckless mistakes, but you certainly have to take risks to win this game. Yeah, you do. And, and the Baron there would have been so tough. I mean, 22 minutes in, do they even have the damage to rush it down Probably in time not. with Rise Alt to move TSM across the map to get there, TP available for Haunter? I think it would have been too big of a risk. And, and they know they still have the team fight potential with things like the Orion and the Rumble. You have so much AoE that if you can pull off the proper team fight, there's always hope with a comp like that until you're just insanely far behind. and. And I think it's it's fine for them to, to stick around and kind of turtle it out, try to scale up. Where it becomes too risky is when TSM goes to the Baron. You know, because TSM having the Baron plus the Ziggs essentially means your base will be broken. And at that point, they're going to have to kind of pick their moment and try to contest, probably. Well, Haunter with the Teleport, still occupying bottom lane. Seraph is two levels down. He's got the zone in, which we saw that nifty interaction last game. Able to cancel out that Camille ultimate. But uh, I'm not sure he's really worried about that at this point. Because if he's on his in front of Haunter, I think he's just going to die. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's nice if you have someone there backing you up. 
But at this point, even Hakuo plus Seraph probably lose 1v2, right? You, you're going to need some serious firepower to actually take down Hauntzer. Uh, even under the turret, Seraph is going to have to play this pretty safe. Hauntzer also has a almost 2,000 gold built up in the bank, so might want to go spend, but again, he's making sure he's on the map and mm -hmm. pressuring here for TSM instead. Probably means that Hauntzer's not going to be doing anything too crazy, although as I say that, looks oh. for Seraph. It doesn't quite... Land the stun after hookshot. And if he hit the stun, I think he just all ends there and, and probably gets the kill or at least forcing out uh, some major cooldowns. That is the kind of power that Hauntzer has on him right now. And he's always going to be looking for these engages, playing around Vision, trying to control the space on the map. Bjergsen splitting top side, he's on the bot side. You have Turtle threatening turrets, and they're going to go straight into the Baron pit. Really nice stuff here. Oh, Turtle got left behind. <laughs> it's all right. He's going to satchel his way over. No, he just throws Q's in instead. Camille goes over the wall, Turtle's like, yeah, I don't really need to auto-attack this with my Lich Bane, but it doesn't actually matter. That's too much damage in TSM. Take Baron. This is kind of becoming a little bit of a TSM classic. Bjergsen loves using the Rise ultimate to move them into this Baron pit. Once they get control of Envy's jungle, it's so hard to react to that play because the Baron goes down so, so quickly. And uh, TSM are making this game look very good, especially with the double Mountain Dragon cashing in on that. Yep, once it goes back, spends his money. Now has the makings of a Randu and Zoman, but everyone is powering up on TSM. Turtle is moving in towards that death cap, so you can kind of think of this in a lot of ways, like maybe Infinity Edge for AD carries this big damage item that you want from your bot laner. Obviously, Zig is an AP champion, but Turtle's got a very similar looking track as far as his build goes. His auto attacks look better with the Lich Bane, has the early power item for the Morello, and now it's just going to be big ulties everywhere. It really is, and, and with the Graves jungle, you're not lacking for attack damage, right? You have consistent sources of AD in the top lane and in the jungle. Uh, Graves really one of the highest consistent physical DPS junglers there are, if not the highest, probably is just straight up the highest. Obviously, there's some that maybe could have a bit better burst with Rengar, yeah. but even there, Lethality Graves burst pretty hard. I think of metagame picks, certainly Graves. Mm -hmm. Is the big one there. I mean, maybe the jungle Twitch mains out there are like, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got my physical DPS. That's Hauntzer at level 16. Looking for prey for that rank 3 Hextech ultimatum. As it stands, TSM with the Baron. He's going to actually leave Turtle in the top lane to do some sieging himself. Yeah, pushing all three waves. So hard to actually wave clear this. And I just can't see them staying alive. Look at this. Seraph getting dove under oh, the Bjergsen, turret. Oh, <laughs> Really nice little play. Realm warps over there as the stasis runs out. That tower should fall on the bottom side as well. Bjergsen is on top of things with these Realm warps. Yeah, he's been doing oh, so well. Oh, Ninja's Ninja, gone. No. He does get the shock up on Bjergsen, but he dies. Instead, Lyra kicks Bjergsen back here, but he might get a kill. Instead, Bjergsen pops the Seraph shield, and TSM is running into the base. And even if they lose the fight, who cares? All three inhibitors are going down. TSM looking prime to end this one in dominant fashion. Monster again, leaping forward, does not get the redemption heal, but just out of the way, but Bjergsen flashes in. Good counter from Haunter as he takes down Apollo. It's all style at this point for TSM. Nexus turrets are going to disintegrate, and TSM will tie it up, and we'll have a third game. TSM right back on four, making game two look easy. Haunter and Bjergsen, the solo lanes really taking over in this one. Yeah, and Sven Skarin, much cleaner early game, did get a lot of jungle pressure out early. Uh, just delayed Lyra a lot. I think did take an extra buff in the early game, so that mm. somewhat uh, risky level one did pay off for them well. Lyra couldn't read the path, so Tyrion got ahead, and then from there, the solo lane just kind of took over as expected. Bjergsen could be everywhere with the Realm Warp. That early 1v1 from Haunter managed to get him a lead, and it was just business there from as usual. I mean, even the stable bottom lane did exactly what it needed to. Just pushed the waves in, and Turtle was around when he needed to siege some turrets. Yeah, I mean, Turtle didn't really have to do much in this one. He's 0-1-1, one, and one, but they win in dominant fashion. He played his role. And, and sometimes the key skill to have is just knowing how to get carried. Yeah, you don't yeah. have to do more. You don't have to be the superstar of a game. I agree. I've been learning this actually as my solo queue adventures increase. So sometimes getting carried is very important. And TSM, a much cleaner game. The type of ex uh, performance we expect from Haunter there on the Camille. I mean, he was just consistently making play after play. Yeah, he, he really was. Uh, and I think one of the coolest things about Bjergsen is his use of the Realm Warp. Uh, and I think better than almost anyone else in the league. Uh, he, he uses it so, so well for the macro plays, you know, getting kills for dives, even just from moving from lane to lane. Uh, he had a cute little play that was off screen where he realm warps the minions onto the tier two turrets. So we can take that down. He's just consistently finding good little uses for it. And I think that is really one of the, the marks of a great player is making the most of every little aspect of your kit. I think also a great rise player. 
because I mean, I played Rise. Let me tell you, I do not do nearly as much damage or have as much effective control on the map. I mean, Rise is a difficult champion to play just if you're trying to output maximum damage. Using also like the intangible elements of his kit yeah. is also very difficult. Yeah, most of my Rise ults are pretty much spent trying to troll my friends, trying to definitely <laughs> step in and then I step out. Uh, Mine is when I get ganked, I try and get away, but I'm not yeah. good, and so I die instead to the Lee Sin instead of it's getting okay. away. It's okay. <laughs> The thought was there. Thank you. I do try. Yeah. I mean, again, Sven also acquired a game for him, but I mean, he did less feeding, which was kind of what he needed to do. <laughs> which is also, like, honestly, his job in this spot, right? He was able to be in the enemy jungle, consistently pressure the lanes, apply apply pressure in lanes where he needed to, and just kind of let TSM do their thing. And I think a lot of what Sven did this game, while it's not flashy, it allows the soul lanes to do so well. And that is tracking the enemy jungler, getting vision, pressuring, and taking away enemy camps. The fact that he's always in his opponent's jungle, warding it up, stealing the camps away, means... Hanser and Bjergsen essentially almost always knew where Lyra was or where he could be based on what is available on the map. That allows them to dominate. That allows them to play aggressive and opt into these fights. So while it is uh, overlooked sometimes, it's still very important. Well, it certainly is, but this series is going to go to Game 3. Meet us back here in a few minutes to see if TSM or Team Envy walk away with the win. You're like Alki, dude. Oh, yeah. No, I don't want to be. Legit, I don't want to be Al Alaki. <laughs> oh my god, I'm, I'm actually cringing so hard. <laughs> How can you not know who Alaki is? Alaki. Save me from my <laughs> weave to miss Raymond. Seraph is in a lot of trouble here. That was Seraph so is nice from Haunt. So looking for a solo kill now. Seraph overheating. Oh, flashes. good flash! Looking for the outplay, but the minion's gonna take him down. Turtle is all alone. Trying to get a trade kill onto a follow before it all goes in. Kick from Lyra is nice. Gonna follow it up, and Turtle just dies. We're pressuring time. Once it's time, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get this. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop.